Welcome to episode two of Unleashing Leadership with me, your host, Travis Moss. And today we're just going to jump right in. You know, we left off at what if, and uh, what if being really the, the gateway to adaptability and growth. And I mentioned my friend Kayla, who is uh, really the, the introduction of what if. And I actually misspoke a little bit. Kayla's term was, how might we? Um, so her big thing is, how might we do something? Uh, at the same time that we were learning and, and kind of progressing through with Kayla on her journey with how might we, um, Steve, the co-host for Ditch the Suits and myself, we actually started to implement the term what if. So kind of happened at the same time. So I'm going to credit maybe both ideas to Kayla here. So how might we is really cool because how might we obviously is very productive and very positive, but it can still probably annoy people. You know, when we started to employ that into our business, we have some people who just kind of like standardization and not rocking the boat. And they were kind of frustrated. Like we're asking how might we do something different for everything? So flip it backwards, be the antagonist. What if we don't? How might we survive if we don't, right? So what if is quicker use what if, what if we don't, what if, you know, if you are, if you are an athlete or you have a child who's an athlete, so it's saying, what if we practice more? Or how might we be successful if we practice more? What if we don't practice more? Because if you don't practice more, somebody's going to take your job, right? Your position might not even make the team. Certainly not going to go to college to play when we get to the pros or whatever your goal is, right? You're thinking about your job. What if we don't scale up? What if we don't get better? Think about your family. What if we don't make more money? What if we don't become better communicators? Think about your business. What if we don't create a better product? What if we don't innovate? What if we don't stay ahead of the competition? Those are scary. It becomes real when you talk about it in those terms because it really implies somebody's coming to get your, your shit, right? Somebody's coming to take from you. But that's, honestly, that's life. Competition, There's there's two... Main points about competition that I want to make today. Number one, competition is, any, so it's a two-pronged thing here. The first prong, competition is anyone who wants what you got um, or to be where you're at. So basically, it's anybody coming in the rearview mirror who can see what you got ahead of them and say, I want that. Whatever bad day you think you're having, that's a good day to somebody else. There's somebody else having a worse day. However much you don't think you have, however little you think you have, that's still more than what somebody else has. You go to work and you want a promotion. You want more money. Guess what? That's money that's coming that somebody else could have been making. If it's not a co-worker, if you say, well, it's a big corporation, lots of money, well, then that's money the shareholders could be making. You're in competition. You want a promotion. That's a job somebody else could have gotten. That's a job somebody else outside of your organization could have gotten. You're in competition not only with the people you know about, but the people you don't know about. Maybe even somebody from outside of your industry could have gotten that position. You won't even have a clue on who those people are. You are always in competition. There are always people looking at what you got or where you are and saying, I want to be there. There's an idea in business that, you know, there's an endless amount of business. And, and I like this idea because it feels nice. Um, basically... I don't need to take your business to grow my business, but I do. That's a fallacy. The reason why that's a fallacy is if you're a business, you, you're, you sell product or a service to make money. And anytime somebody spends their money at your business, that is money that could have gone to somebody else's business. They talk about, you know, they build football stadiums and they build uh, basketball coliseums and they build... Um, you know, universities or whatever they build. And they say, well, this is great because look at all the business that pulls into the community. And that's great for the community. At what cost though? That pulled money from other communities. So if I centralize all the entertainment into one community, that means I pulled all the money that was being spent in the, in the surrounding communities, at the restaurants, at the local shops and stuff. Now we're spending that to go and, and participate in an activity at another community. So communities, even your municipality, your town, your city, 
is competing with every other town and city in the world. Every single one. You want young people to come to your town? I'm from a small small area, uh, rural area in upstate New York. They, they always complain about not getting, being able to get young people to come in because you're competing with all the other places that those young people can go. And what do you have to offer? What if you don't include more young people in the discussions about what the future should hold? What if you don't empower, right? What if you don't build the things that those young people want? They're not going to move to your community. It's not just taking a best practice. You literally got to go out there and say, how are we getting surpassed by everybody else? What are they doing? Can we even compete in that space? Or do we need to do something radically different? Here's the other part of competition, the part you can't see. That's the group of people who are competing with you or a group of businesses that are competing with you. You don't know about. They are just going to make you irrelevant. They may not, that may not even be their goal. It might be their goal. In team of teams, you're talking war, right? And you're talking terrorists. They want to control. They want to destroy. They want to make things irrelevant. They don't care the damage that they do. They don't care the collateral damage. They just don't give a damn. Those fuckers will kill and destroy anything they possibly can. To get their end game. You don't think that happens in, in, in business? You don't think that happens in life? There are some people that are so desperate. There are some businesses that are, they're just doing their thing and there's going to be collateral damage. There's going to be businesses that fail because this business kills some key part of their supply line. It, it's disruptive. It just, it changes things. It changes the players on the field in a way that you're forced to adapt and you never see it coming. So there's a type of competition that's out there, and this is this is real competition, that's coming for you whether you know it or not. Possibly even from industries you don't even know exist. Or you, you're sitting there going, why would, I'm the, I'm, and I've had clients like this. We are the largest in the country for what we do. There's nobody who can really compete with us. We are at the top of the food chain. Yeah, okay. It says every business before it collapses. Because guess what? What happens if a company commoditizes what you do and offers it for free? Because there's a higher value service that they're, there's a higher margin service essentially to sell them on the side. There's a story in one of Ben Horowitz's books, a uh, great author. I really enjoy his work. He writes it from a perspective of a CEO. We'll, we'll cover some of his books. But, um, his biz, one of his businesses had a, a prospective client or a client that they were trying to keep, and the client was huffy puffy and was going basically looking for a reason to get rid of them. And they found out that the client really loved this technology platform that they were going to have to start paying for, and it was like going to be cut out of the budget or something. I don't know. Something was happening. They were going to lose this technology uh, platform. And it was this little company, and so they went. And they bought the little company. And they gave the service to the client for free. If you were competing with that business, you just like, what the hell just happened? It's like a predator comes in that the prey never even knew existed and just swallows that hole and boom, it's just like, all right, that's it. Wrap that up. Let's go. Right. And it, Think about how that changes the board. You know, this whole game of life, right? Think about how that changes it. So here's how I think about competition. I think that this helps everybody. Because you have to be obsessed. You have to realize that if you, you know, there's going to be two types of people that listen to this. There's, there's the type that's like, I already made it. I'm successful. I'm just listening to this because it's interesting. But this doesn't really apply to me because I have everything I need. Probably because you approach things similar to this. And if you're at that point, think about who might need this. Whether it's your kids, your grandkids, your siblings, nieces, nephews, whatever it is. There's people out there that are really struggling with this. So if you've already got it, great, but share it. If you don't have it, this is this is how to think about this. On a piece of paper, draw a line horizontally across the paper. And put a definitive dot on each end of the line. So... Let's say that this is like a, a nine inch line across. Well, I guess that's a big piece of paper, but let's, let's just 
um, let's say it's a six inch line across the paper and there's a dot at each end. Where now from left to right, left is um, least advanced, right is most advanced. Where do you think that you fall in whatever you're doing? So again, back to the athlete. If you're an athlete, how do you compare to your competition? Um, if you're an academic, how do you compare to your competition? Right. To be best in your in your field. Um, if you are a business, where, where are you? Where are you compared to your competition? And what we're talking about is growth and adaptability here. So this isn't like, oh, we just, you know, we're really arrogant and we just think we're great. This is really a, you, a gut check. You look at yourself. Where do you fall compared to your competition? Plot yourself on there. And every single one of you that has plotted yourself more than a third of the way in from the left, you're lying to yourself. And the reason is, when you open yourself up to growth and adaptability, the thing that you figure out is, holy shit, look at everything I could do. Look at everything, I, all the places we could go with this. This is endless, limitless. There is no finite level of how great you can become or what you can create or where you can go. There just isn't. So the further you think you get to the right, the more that right-hand side grows. So the farthest you can really get is about a third of the way in. So you plot yourself, and let's say that you you're there, you're the third of the way in, and you're constantly finding new ways and better ways, and wishing that you knew this 15 years ago, and whatever, right? Then you look backwards and you say, okay, where's everybody else? And you plot everybody else along that line between you and the start point. The further you get to the right, the harder it is to separate the diff the the different companies or the different individuals behind you. They kind of blob together because they're so far behind you. And they probably push closer and closer and closer to that left-hand border. Now, if you're not the one out leading the pack, how might you get there? And what if you don't get there? If you are the one leading the pack, how do you stay there? And what if you don't? You can never stop. You can never stop adapting and growing until you're ready to say, I've got everything I need. I'm all done. Perfect. Then take the exit ramp, get off the highway. And then become a mentor and help other people get there. But if you're not there, if your career is not where you want it, if your endeavor is not as advanced as you want it to be, if your business isn't where you need it to be, if you're not ready to get off that exit ramp, you better keep freaking growing. You better keep getting better. Somebody else is watching what you did, and they're going to figure out a better way to do it. And they're going to pass you. They're going to blow by you. It's going to be like the car on the highway that blow by, that, that just, it rumbles your windows when it goes by. It goes by so fast. You're just going to go, what the fuck was that? That was your competition. Don't let it happen. Figure out where you are in the line. Be honest with yourself. Figure out where you are. What does it take to get ahead and what does it take to stay ahead? That's what you have to do. And there's no reason you can't. There's literally no reason you can't.